I can't hear myself, so. Happy Mother's Day. It is a great day because today we celebrate all you moms in the room and elsewhere. Um, your life, your sacrifice, and your love for your kids, we greatly appreciate you and we want to honor you today. I'm honored to be here uh, at New Hope. I've loved it. I'm honored to be up here speaking and I'm very honored to be speaking about somebody very special in my life. Um, unfortunately, she is no longer on this earth, but she was a very godly mother. I'd like to introduce you to my mom. We can, this is my mom and my dad. Uh, her name was Lori Eyre and my dad, Gordon Eyre. I'm pretty sure my dad's watching right now, so hi, dad. <laughs> um, but my mom was 59 years old when she passed. It was about a year and a half ago that she passed away. She had an eight-year battle with cancer, ovarian cancer. And in my life, my mom left a very deep and impacting impression on my life. And today I'm honored that I get to share with you all about that. Um, I want to draw your attention first off to Proverbs 31. Because today we're going to talk about a godly mother, a godly woman. And Proverbs 31, I think, sums up a lot of what you godly women and you godly moms are like with your relationship with God. So in verse 25, chapter 31, strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household, and she does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise and call her blessed, her husband also. He praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her of the fruits of her hand and let her works be praised in the gate. And that was written a long, long time ago, but it still applies to moms and godly women today. So today I'm going to talk about the impact of a godly mother. And the impact of a godly mother can be seen in many different ways, in many different avenues. But today I'm going to focus on just four. Four ways that my mother's life impacted my own. And the first is that my mother taught me. When I was growing up, I was kind of a blabbermouth. <laughs> I kind of just said whatever the first thing that came to my mind. It just kind of came right out. One day, my mother and my older sister, I have three other siblings. I have an older brother, an older sister, and a younger sister. And me and my mom and my older sister and I were in the van. We were going to Chester's in Plymouth, Wisconsin. That's my hometown. And Chester's is kind of like a Sonic, but it's a little bit more old-fashioned. We were sitting there in the car waiting for our food, and my older sister, when she was in high school, she could talk for 20 minutes straight without taking a breath. She was so fast, and you could not get a word in edgewise. If she talked for 10 minutes and I had something to say, she'd talk another 10 minutes, and whatever I had to say was irrelevant by then. So I just didn't talk. Uh, but. On this occasion, uh, my sister paused to take a breath, and I was able to say something. I don't remember what I said, but my mom turned around in the driver's seat, and she said, Anna, you cannot say stuff like that. You will not have any friends. <laughs> Woo! She knew how to cut right to the core. Uh, see, like I said, I just kind of said whatever came straight to my mind. It was just there and then out my mouth. So it wasn't always very kind. But in that moment, she taught me how to be kind with my words. She taught me how to be kind with my deeds. 
And she taught me how to be kind with my thoughts, not just what I was saying, but thinking kindly about people. I also wanted friends, so, you know, that kind of helped. <laughs> but, and there were many other moments where my mom taught me how to be a good friend, but that one stood out the most because it impacted not just my speech and my deeds, but also my thoughts and how I thought about people. Another way my mom impacted my life and taught me was through taking care of a home. My mom gave all of my siblings and myself chores to do. She wanted us to have responsibility. Um, so she wanted us to clean every Friday, every Friday. And she would make up a list of everything that we had to do. And we had to get it all done, so clean your room, Windex this, pledge that, vacuum this, mop that. And my mom and my dad, when they cleaned, they were meticulous. Like, you, no dirt, no dust, nothing could be left at all. They were very clean people. So when she had me and my siblings clean, she would come by and she would check out what we were doing and see if there were any dirt. And if there was, she'd make us do it all over again. So I learned pretty quickly <laughs> to do it well, do good the first time, and then I could be done and I could go play. Uh, unfortunately, some of my other siblings, they it took them a little while to learn that lesson, and boy, did they, they get upset. But, you know. But my mom taught me what a job well done looked like because of cleaning a home. She also taught me how to cook. I just failed to learn. <laughs> uh, <laughs> both my mom and my dad are really good cooks, but um, I don't know, I guess. It's more deep, deep, deep down, right? It'll eventually come out one day, uh, <laughs> working on it. Um, Another way my mom taught me was how to be a godly wife. Now, I'm newly married just this past December, and I'm still working on it. I'm still learning, but so is he. So <laughs> we're working together. We're figuring it out. But my mom set some, in some high standards for me to achieve in being a godly wife. Um, to this day, when my dad still talks about my mom, he, I can't tell you how many times he's told me this, but he always brings up the fact that my mom honored and loved and respected him so much that she never said a single bad word about him to her friends, to her family in public, never. And he was always, always very touched at how she loved him and how she respected him. So like I said, I'm only a couple months into marriage, but my mom set those standards that I want to achieve in my own relationship with my husband. So my mom taught me how to be a good friend. She taught me how to take care of a home, and maybe one day I'll get the cooking part. And she taught me how to be a godly wife. A godly mother teaches her children how to live life. She teaches them how to one day be on their own, hopefully successfully. And my mom certainly taught me about how to live life. The next thing that my mom taught me was, impacted my life, was discipline. Uh, so my siblings and I were homeschooled. My mom was a nurse in the Navy uh, when she was right out of college, and then she became a teacher, an elementary teacher. And by the time uh, she had kids, so my older siblings are adopted. I was a surprise 10 years into their marriage. So my brother Zach and my sister Lauren, and then me, and then my sister Allie is also adopted. And my mom taught all four of us. And she was rigorous, <laughs> okay? We had to be out of bed, you know, ready for the day, and we had to be at our desk at 8.30, and she had an entire list for each day of the week, five days of the week, so not, I got Saturdays and Sundays off, but Monday through Friday of 
everything we had to do. So what subject, what activities, page number to page number, and if we did not get it done, we were going to be sitting at that desk until we finished it. So I was pretty focused at that point. But one of the things she had us do was memorize scripture, and we called it the ABCs of scripture. So A was a memory verse, B was a memory verse, C, and all the way down to Z. And I didn't put this together until actually a couple weeks ago when I was thinking about it, but my mom was sneaky and strategic with stuff. She really was. Uh, the very first memory verse we ever have to, had to learn was A. A wise son makes a father glad, but a foolish son is a grief to his mother, Proverbs 10.1. <laughs> and it's great. She's having us learn, you know, memorize and learn scripture, but she was also using it to her benefit because she was saying, hey, look, kids, don't give me grief, okay? <laughs> but I still gave her grief. Sorry, Mom. Um, when I was eight or nine, uh, I was sitting at the lunch table with my sister, and it was just her and me, my older sister. And like I said, when she was in high school, she could just talk and talk and talk and talk and couldn't get a word in edgewise. And I'm five years younger than her, so there's a bit of a difference. And she was being mean. I remember that distinctly. I don't remember what she was saying, but she was not being very nice. And I couldn't get an, er, a word in edgewise, so what I did because she was being mean, as I hit her on the arm. And not a second went past before she turned around. She goes, Mom, Anna hit me. And then I was like, oh, I am in trouble. <laughs> and the discipline I received, I never hit another person. <laughs> but Lauren was being mean, so that, that was part two. <laughs> uh, my last story, ooh, sorry. My last story of discipline was I was about four or five years old and I had a friend and she was over at my house for a play date. And uh, her mom came to pick her up and my friend said to me, hey Anna, why don't you sneak in the van and go back to my house and that way the play date doesn't end. I'm four or five years old, mind you. And I'm like, that's a great idea. So what do I do? I get in the van, I hide behind the seats, we get all the way back to my friend's house before her mom realizes that I'm hiding in the back seat. <laughs> so she finds out and she's like, oh, we gotta take you back. So I turn all the way back. I didn't even get to, you know, finish my play date. But we drive all the way back. And again, I tell you, the discipline I received, I never did that again. Never did that again, nope. When I was older, uh, my mom and I would have conversations about parenting and, and disciplining for my benefit when one day I'd become a parent. And she told me that her goal when raising me and my siblings was that she was raising us so other people liked us, not just her. <laughs> and she'd also tell me that she was raising us to be obedient to God because if we could be obedient to what she was telling us to do, how much more could we be obedient to God? Uh, the third point I want to make is my mother impacted me through love. So my siblings, as I said, they, they're adopted. My brother and my older sister were, are from Korea. They're adopted from Korea. Surprised 10 years into marriage and then my little sister is adopted from China. My mother loved each of us the same. All, all throughout growing up, e even to this day when I tell people that I am from an adopted family and where my siblings are from, I'll have people come up to me and say, oh, you're the favorite, you must be the favorite because you're the biological child, it makes sense. And it always baffled me because All throughout growing up, I had never seen that I was the favorite one. My mom always treated us the same across the board. My brother was super, super smart, 
Like, out of all the siblings, he's the smartest. And my mom knew that, and my brother enjoyed that, so she found ways to empower him and grow him in that area. He could read a 400-page book in a matter of like two or three hours. I can't do that. My older sister, Lauren, from Korea, and she fell in love with the Korean culture when she was in high school. And my mom would sacrifice time out of her week to allow my older sister to enjoy that part of her culture. On Sundays, my mom would spend two, hour, two hours every Sunday driving my sister to and from a Korean church. And I remember that because I was in the back seat along for the ride, which was boring. Um, but she, my mom also allowed my sister to learn Korean and teach uh, uh, Korean to, or teach English to Korean students uh, um, on an online program. She also allowed my sister to keep Korean food in the fridge, much to the dismay of my dad because kimchi does not actually smell all that good. <laughs> but my mom loved my brother and my sister, and she wanted, she would have given them the world if she could. For me, I was kind of all over the board with activities. My mom allowed me to do ice skating and horseback riding. I was able to take a sign language class. I was able to do dance and piano lessons if, if we could afford it. And I stuck it out for more than one month. My mom would let me do it. <laughs> my little sister takes after my older sister. She has a love for her Chinese culture. And my mom allowed her to take Taekwondo. I can't pronounce it. Taekwondo, there we go. And uh, Chinese lessons. And my younger sister was also super artsy. And my mom always invested into that. My mom gave what she could equally to each of us, and she loved us deeply, and she sacrificed time out of her week to invest in us. Uh, the very last words my mom ever said to me was that, I love you, was that, she said, I love you to pieces. A mother's love cannot be outdone. God's love outdoes it, <laughs> but a mother's love gives us a very good picture of the Father's love for us. The fourth thing I'm going to talk to, talk to you about today on how my mother impacted my life is her godliness and her relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus was the very center of my mom's life. In everything she did, Jesus was always there. When I was in high school, I would come home from a friend's house or from work or something, and I'd be upset. And I'd go in by her, and I'd, I'd start ranting. I was a little dramatic in high school. Um, but I'd sit there, and I'd start ranting. And she always would say, hmm, maybe you should pray about that. Why don't you talk to God about that? Here's the scripture for this. Here's the scripture for that. And I'm over here and I'm going, Ma, I just want you to listen. But she was always pointing me back to Jesus. In elementary, um, she had us learn scripture. She had us do family prayer. We had family prayer every night. We would gather in a circle and all of us had to say our prayers. It wasn't just her and my mom. And she taught us how to be obedient to the Lord. There were different situations in my life where she would come and she'd say, the Lord is telling you to do this. You need to go do it. And my mom taught me how to be obedient to the Lord. In high school and college, I had some heartbreak over friends or life in general would sometimes just get me down. And there were times when mom would sit down, me and my siblings, and she'd say, look guys, my cancer has come back. I gotta do another surgery and I gotta do more rounds of chemo. And these things would just tear me up inside. And she would come and she'd comfort me and she'd tell me this scripture verse over and over again. It's Psalms 56, eight. You, O Lord, keep track of my sorrows. You collect my tears in a bottle and you record each one in your book. See, my mom knew 
that in times of good and bad that I had to cling to Jesus. She wouldn't always be around to be there to comfort me or hold me tight. But the one who was going to be there was Jesus, and she always led me back to him. Mothers, you have the opportunity to interact and minister to your kids so that they see Jesus. When I was 12 years old, my mom was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. I still remember to this day sitting there in the living room and my parents telling me that they had found two melon-sized tumors in her ovaries. Now, when I was 12, I didn't really understand what was going on because they hadn't used the word cancer yet until they had done the surgery and taken out the tumors. Um, but it was hard. My mom had a full hysterectomy, and later in life she joked that it was okay because, you know, she went through menopause in like a month, and it made it all better. <laughs> but she, she had the surgery, and right after she had to start six months of chemotherapy, and she would have chemo just about every week, every Tuesday. And it was hard because she'd only feel good about two days out of the week. The rest of the days, from what I remember, was she would spend laying in her bed looking frail and thin, not being able to keep much down and just feeling sick. But during that time, she held on to God, and she just clung to him as this disease was fighting for her life. And I didn't know it at the time, but because my mom hung on to Jesus so tightly while she was going through cancer and chemotherapy, it deeply impacted my own life. When I was 16 years old, I was called into the ministry. When I was 17, I was graduated from high school, and I went off to New Jersey for a master's commission. Because when I was called when I was 16, I was going, Lord, I don't think we're square, and if you want me to be a minister, we got to get level. So I need to go somewhere where they can help me be there. So I went to master's commission in New Jersey. I was only there three months when I started having a lot of pain in my hips and my back. And it was kind of like being in the body of an 80-year-old. I, I uh, would sit down, and I'd stand up, and I'd be hunched over, and I wouldn't be able to straighten up for, for a half an hour. I was in so much pain and so stiff, and, and my body wasn't working. The, after a series of doctor's appointments, the doctors found out I actually had fractured the very bottom part of my back. And here I am in New Jersey, and these doctors are talking about doing a fusion surgery. And I'm on the phone with my mom, and she says, you're coming home to Wisconsin. You are coming right home. So I pack up my stuff, and I go home. And at this point, I'm a little confused. I'm a little frustrated and a little hurt by God, but I was going to remain positive, and I was going to trust in the Lord that this was his plan. While I was back there in Wisconsin, they decided that surgery was the second option and that we were first going to try some intense physical therapy and see if that worked because the surgery was super extensive and took a long time to heal. So we did a very intense physical therapy program for five months. And as you can see, I'm still good today, so it worked. <laughs> uh, but while I was doing that, was, like I said, I was trying to stay positive and trust God. I had one more therapy appointment when I got really, really, really sick. I, it was a week before Easter, and I ended up in the ER a couple times, fever of 105. They could not figure out what was going on. I was sick. Uh, that was over a weekend, and then on Tuesday, I went to my, my regular doctor, and he looked at me, and he was like, oh, no, you're, you're close to death here, and it was discovered that I had a heart infection, and I was hospitalized that day. Three weeks after the whole ordeal, I found out that the 
doctors, if I hadn't come in when I did, two days later, I would have been dead. So I had to stay at the hospital for about five days, and then I was on a pick line, which is an at-home IV in your arm medicine for another six weeks after my hospital stay. Three days into the hospital visit, I, uh, my mom came to my bedside and she said, Anna, do you want me to read the Bible to you? And at this point, I am not happy with God. I had this fractured back. I was struggling then, and now I'm on the verge of death. And if you've ever had an infection in your body, not only does it affect you physically, but it also affects you emotionally, mentally, and for me, it was really affecting me spiritually. And so when my mom asked me if she wanted me to have her read the Bible to me, I had to pause because everything within me wanted to say no. But I thought about it, and she asked me again, Anna, do you want me to read the Bible to you? And I said yes. And in that moment, nor her or I realized, but because when my mom was going through her cancer and she clung so tightly to Jesus, she set the example for me when I was going through my sickness, when I was on the verge of death, to cling to Jesus. Her life, going through what she did, impacted mine as I was going through something similar. If my mom had not have chosen to follow God and cling to him during her cancer, I don't know if I would have made the same choice. I saw that God was faithful to her as she was faithful to him. So I knew if I was faithful to him, he'd also be faithful to me. You cannot give what you do not have. You cannot transfer what you do not possess. And your kids cannot accept what you do not have to give. They cannot accept. And I say accept because kids do have to accept what, what you give. There's mamas in here today that you do live a, a powerful, vibrant, deep relationship with the Lord, and your kids are not following Jesus. You have some prodigal children. But I want you to know, do not be mistaken. Your life has still made an impact on that child some way or another. And just because they have not accepted what you have given now does not mean that one day they won't. Nor does it mean that you haven't impacted them deeply in some way right now. The most important thing you can give your children is Jesus, and the way you give them Jesus is through you. At my mama's funeral, the whole place was packed to the brim with people, I, half of them I can't even tell you who they were. I don't know them. There were people there who knew my mom from 10 years ago that maybe my mom had a conversation with, you know, just here and there, just a little bit. But my mom had such a deep, vibrant relationship with the Lord that it made her kind and genuine, and people saw Jesus in her, that they were just drawn to her. She impacted acquaintances. She impacted her friends. She impacted her spouse. But most of all, she impacted me and my siblings. She was always giving us Jesus in the way she taught, in the way she disciplined, in the way she loved, there was always, always Jesus. Mothers, I want you to get this, that the most important part of raising your kids, out of all the numerous important things, like keeping them alive, keeping them fed, keeping them clothed, the most important thing is giving them Jesus by having a vibrant and deep relationship with him yourself. So today I want to say thank you to all the mamas in the room. I want to say thank you for supporting your kids, for teaching, for disciplining, for loving. 
And thank you for having a deep, vibrant relationship with Jesus because it does impact your kids and it does change lives. My mama's life is an example of that in my own. You guys pour out and you give and you give and you sacrifice and you love. So today we want to say thank you to you and we want to minister to you. So I'm going to call the prayer team up and the music and the worship team. And I want all the mamas to come forward because you guys have needs and we want to honor and love on you today because of how much you love and sacrifice for your kids. So if we could all please stand. All the mothers in the room, will you please come forward? And we're just going to take some time to meet with God and to sing a song to him. And then we're going to pray over you and we're going to bless you because today is about you.